What's up, extraordinary people? I'm Daniel, and today we're going to talk about Journey of Water inspired by Moana, the newest Walt Disney World attraction. The attraction is currently only open for cast member and annual pass holder previews, but will be opening to all park guests on October 16th of this year. I was able to preview it at Destination D23, and so I'm going to give you all my thoughts on the attraction, as well as all the information you need to decide whether it's worth checking out on your next trip. So, starting with an overview of the attraction, Journey of Water inspired by Moana is an interactive educational outdoor walk through that teaches about the water cycle and features characters and locations from the 2016 Disney animated feature Moana. In addition to information about the water cycle, the walkthrough contains interactive water features that allow guests to play and get wet, although a dry path is also available for those who simply wish to observe. Journey of Water is located in Epcot in the World Nature neighborhood, the area formerly known as Future World West, and occupies the space formerly held by Inventions West and before that Communicore West. The entrance is right across from the Seas of Nemo and Friends and is also close to the Land Pavilion. While Disney has not officially announced this yet, it's likely that this attraction being a walkthrough will not have any lightning lane or virtual queue, rather simply letting guests walk in and only having to wait if the attraction is at capacity to prevent overcrowding. The reason I believe this is because of the lack of Magic Band readers at the entrance of the attraction, although Disney could theoretically install them at a later date. However, there have been some reports that this will feature a virtual queue, but to my knowledge this is simply speculation as I don't believe Disney has actually confirmed this. As stated at the attraction entrance, the attraction's capacity is 151 people, so it is likely, especially right after opening, that this attraction will have a wait, although I expect that will die down within at least a few weeks, if not shorter. This attraction is accommodating to wheelchair users and service animals, however, both must use the dry path. Food and beverages are not allowed in the walkthrough, with the exception of bottled water, neither are glass objects. Children under 12 must have adult supervision, and there are restrooms located within the attraction. Alright, now for a walkthrough and description of the attraction. And be warned, this section will contain spoilers. If you'd like to skip this section, you can skip to this timestamp. Upon entering the attraction, you're immediately confronted with a large rock featuring a waterfall and the symbol of the heart of Tefiti. A sign introduces the water cycle and explains what it is and why it's important. Each consecutive section of the walkthrough focuses on a different form water takes as it makes its journey through the cycle. The next section is rain, represented by a large rock spraying mist, and an interactive area with strings of falling water that play musical notes when you put your hand through them. The next area is stream, featuring jumping water fountains. Next we have wetland, featuring bridges over water fountains, and spring, featuring jets that spray a stream of water when you hold your hand out over them. The next section, Land, features a tunnel with a waterfall that parts for you when you stand in front or slowly walk through. A dry path to the right is also available with no waterfall. After exiting this section, restrooms are available on a path to the left. The next section is Lake, featuring a waterfall, a bridge over a large body of water, and a statue of Tefiti with some jumping water fountains in front. After this is River, featuring even more jumping water fountains, and then Ocean featuring an enormous play area with multiple interactive features and easter eggs from Moana. These include a giant splash pad, a wave feature that creates a giant wave when enough guests stand in front and raise their arms, a statue of Tamatoa, and a carving of baby Moana. Finally, sky is represented by a rock spraying mist, and a sign urges guests to help protect and preserve our planet's water for future generations. You then exit the attraction back into world nature, just slightly to the right of the attraction's entrance. As stated before, this attraction is accommodating to people of all body sizes and abilities. The only exception to this I can think of would be those with an allergy to having water splashed on them. Yes, that is a real condition for those of you who might not know. While I was personally able to stay dry while walking through this attraction, even though I did not use the dry path, and it is designed to allow those who wish to stay dry to do so, I obviously can't guarantee that you won't get wet at all while walking through. If you absolutely don't want to get wet, or if doing so would be hazardous to your health in any way, I would take that into consideration. I think the chance you'll get wet if you're not trying to is very low, but it is still there regardless. That's all the objective information I can provide about this attraction, so now here's my personal opinion. Overall, I am very impressed with Journey of Water inspired by Moana. I think this is the best attraction Epcot has gotten in years, and before you write me off for saying that, let me explain why. Epcot was originally supposed to be an inspirational park. It was supposed to educate you about the world and about humanity's role in it, and then inspire you to go and make the world a better place. So you had rides like World of Motion, which is about the history of transportation and how we can build better transportation, or Spaceship Earth about the history and future of communication, or Living with the Land about agriculture. Journey into Imagination, the greatest ride of all time, was about imagination and how that's where everything comes from. It all comes from the imagination, from creativity. 
Even the World Showcase was about celebrating the diversity of human cultures and how understanding each other and cooperating across cultures would create a better future. So Epcot was meant not only to entertain, but also to educate and inspire. In my opinion, that first decade or so of Epcot was the pinnacle of Disney Imagineering. We got so many just amazing original attractions that were just beautiful and powerful works of art that really made you believe that a bright future was possible and that we could make it happen. Unfortunately though, Epcot has fallen very far from that goal in my opinion. With the exception of Spaceship Earth and Living with the Land, all those original attractions were eventually closed and replaced with far lesser ones. And then many of those were replaced and downgraded once again. So today we get rides like Frozen Ever After, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind that are focused far more on thrills and recognizable characters than they are on anything that has to do with the themes of Epcot. They're not bad rides, they just don't belong in Epcot. Yes, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is a fun roller coaster, but what does it have to do with celebrating human achievement and learning about the world or inspiring a better future? Nothing. Epcot desperately needs new attractions that actually support those themes. And that's why Journey of Water inspired by Moana is so great. Because it does. And it does so really well. This is a beautifully realized attraction about the water cycle first and Moana second. Rather than shoving in characters and intellectual property where they arguably don't belong, this attraction uses them to educate guests about the world and their role in building the future. Additionally, the landscaping and sculpting of the attraction is beautiful, the sight lines are immaculate making the space completely immersive, with only Spaceship Earth and the monorail track being visible from inside the attraction, the musical score is perfect, and the interactive features are really fun and creative. In my opinion, this attraction succeeds perfectly at what it's trying to do, and what it's trying to do lines up perfectly with the themes of Epcot. And it's the first Epcot attraction in years that does both of those things. So my opinion of this attraction is very positive. I love it. I think it's amazing. So now to the question of who do I recommend this attraction to? Well, pretty much everyone. If you're an adult, you will likely appreciate this attraction because it's a beautiful space where you can relax, cool off, and even learn something. If you have kids, they'll likely love the interactive features and the Moana Easter eggs and also learn something. If you're a fan of classic Epcot, this attraction harkens back to that, and if you're a fan of Disney characters, this attraction features that as well. Other than the aforementioned people who don't want to or can't get wet, there's really only two types of people I would not recommend this to, and those would be one, people who hate Moana, which, why would you hate Moana? It's a great movie. And two, people who only want to ride rides, which goes without saying because this isn't a ride. If either of those describe you, you probably won't like this, but you likely already knew that before even clicking on this video, so I would question why you're even watching. But I would still say though that you should give it a chance. Broaden your horizons a little bit, try something new. If you end up not liking it, at least you didn't have to wait in a long line, so it's a very low risk situation. For me, this is a great attraction that makes me much more optimistic about the future of Epcot and how it can continue to evolve while retaining its core themes. But hopefully, I've given you all the necessary information to make the decision of whether you want to experience this attraction for yourself. That concludes this review. Let me know in the comments if this is helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching, and remember that you're extraordinary. I love all of you so much. Bye!